to God's people. Have a spirit-filled Sabbath day. God bless you. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. The church is now called to worship. This morning, Lord, as we come to worship you, we want to thank you, Lord, for this week. We want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity you allow us to be here this morning. As we continue to worship you, we ask you, Lord, to send your Holy Spirit among us and help us to feel your presence in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Are you happy to be here to praise him this morning? I'm happy that we're in the house of the Lord because I just love to praise him. And there's so many ways that we can praise our Lord. He gave us so many things that we can use. We have, we have our hands. And I know a lot of us may have aches and pains. Our legs may be hurting. But if you don't have legs, then you have hands with that you can praise the Lord. If you, if you don't have a voice, then there are other ways to praise the Lord. So... At this moment, I want everyone to sing with me. I want you to make a joyful noise as we sing this medley. We're going to start, we're going to sing, This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. One more time, I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing. This train is bound for glory, this train.
reassurance that God is looking out for you. He knows you personally. He knows what you're going through. So we're going to sing this song that says, He knows my name. And hears me when I 
call And here's me when I call And here's me when I call And here's me when I call Please stand as we sing the hymn of praise Number one, praise to the Lord
I'm too far from where I started from Nobody told me the road would be easy And I don't believe he promised this far to leave me No, he didn't bring me out here to leave me lonely Even if I can't see clearly I know that you were here with so just can't give up now Nobody told me I'm too far from where I started from Nobody told me the road would be easy I don't believe he brought me this far Can't give up now I've come too far Started from Nobody told me the road will na 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 Don't believe he brought me this far God for the gift that he has given to my daughter and you know since well, it's been some time that Shania and I we make a team so anytime I have to preach somewhere when it is possible he, she always introduced me <clears throat> so this is the blessing that the Lord has given to me. You know, I hoped that I could sing. And it was something that I thought I would be able to do. But you know, when you really want to have something and you can't, and the Lord wants to bless you anyway, he will bypass some corners and he will give it to you. This is my gift to my daughter. I keep asking the church family to pray for her because when we look around and we see how these stars used to sing in choirs and churches and now where they are, it is important for us to keep them in our prayers. This morning, let me thank all the master guides, all the staffs for the Pathfinder Club, for the ministry in this church. We had the privilege to visit the uh, master guide camp a um, few weeks ago. And you know that 
our church face a great crisis. And this crisis is at different level. Our young people, when they reach a certain age, they decide not to come anymore to church. And this is it. We cannot force them to come. But what we can do, we can tackle the problem at the root. So I'm going to ask all the members to, when you see any leaders from the Pathfinder Club, to take time to thank them for the work for their ministry in this church. Because we need to encourage them to continue to work with the young people. If we start that work with what we have to do as parents at home, I know that by the grace of God, we will have success to keep them in the church. When they have programs in the church, I ask you parents to be there with them. Because what happens is, most of the time when we plan our activities, when the young people plan their activities, they will plan it with a good intention. But since they are by themselves, what happens is their weaknesses will show in these activities. But if they have adults with them, so that means we will reach the balance in what they are planning. And in the same way in church, in the church activities, as much as possible, if we can get the young people involved, take part of it, that will help them to find themselves in what we are doing. And for sure, by the grace of God, they will remain in the church. This morning we will change a little bit the topic in the bulletin it's the title is ready be ready it is time but this morning I will preach the title is remain in his plan we need to remain in the plan of God just before we start, I will invite you to bow your heads as we will pray God together. As we will share the words this morning, Lord, I pray that you will be with us and you will talk through us. May your people will be blessed after the message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I will invite you to open your Bible with me in 1 Samuel chapter 16. And this morning we will do something differently. I'm going to ask you to read with me, but we will do the reading. Um, we will alternate in the reading. I will start with verse 1. And we'll go up to verse 13. First Samuel, first Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 through 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your own with oil and be on your, God, on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. And 
invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at, but, man's, but a man looks at the at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Jesse then had Shama pass by, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There's still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he's tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. Together, so Samuel took the horn of oil and I noted him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. You remember that at the beginning, so was the king. So was chosen to be the king to lead the people. And at the beginning, Saul was doing great. But, you know, sometimes when you think that you have it all, you become to feel the pride. And the Lord said that he rejected Saul. In chapter 9, Saul was anointed king. Until the time that he thought that he was the king of the kings. He can do whatever he wants to. And the way he wants it to do, to be. It is when the Lord said that I don't need you anymore. I can do it myself. Sometimes the Lord asks us to do something, friends, and the way that we are doing it, it's as if that we deserve it, it's ours, and nobody can tell us how to do it. But, you know, Samuel, when he sees the way Saul was acting, he was afraid of what could have been happened to him. But in chapter 16, the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Are you going to be afraid of Saul, not to do what I'm asked you to do? And the Lord said that now you will take your own and I will tell you who you're going to choose. And now, 
David was born in Bethlehem, a few miles south of Jerusalem. About a thousand years before Jesus came in the world in this same city. David spent the tender years of his childhood on the surrounding hills, occupied in keeping his father's flocks. He charmed the, the monotony of the hours by singing the hymns of his compositions, which he accompanied his, with the harmonious sounds of his instruments. Thus, by his solitary life, God prepared him for the work to which he intended him. Brothers and sisters, young people, simplicity will not take you away from the plans of God. The fact that you are different from the world will not diminish you. On the contrary, it will bring you closer to the Lord. For the Apostle Paul declares in Romans 12 verse 2, And be not fashioned according to this world, but, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. No external beauty, no greatness can we commend to the Lord. True beauty, greatness is expressed by wisdom, by the excellence of character and conduct. It is the goodness of the heart that makes us acceptable to God. It is not by popularity, by knowledge, but the Lord is calling for humble service. Whatever humbles, whoever humbles himself will surely be raised by the Almighty. Even before the prophet Samuel had started with the sacrifice before the usual meal, Samuel began to inspect the, the sons of Jesse. Eliab, the oldest, was very like Saul by his beauty and his physique. But it was not The thing that the Lord was looking for. Samuel was there and he, he, he had a mission. But you know, I assume that Samuel wanted to finish as soon as possible, as quick, quick as possible with the work because he knew that if Saul knew that he was at Bethlehem for that mission, he would have killed him. The Bible says in chapter 16, verse 6, when they arrived, Samuel saw Eli and thought surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. His features, he was very caught, and his attitude attracted the attention of the prophet. The outer side of Eli impressed Samuel. Sometimes we look people and by the cover we can decide whether or not we will allow him or her to do things. That's why sometimes we found people like in many positions in the church or in some businesses 
but even though they are not able to do it. When Samuel saw Eliab, he was convinced that he was the one that the Lord would choose to, to be the next king. But the Lord says to him, do not look at his fine face or his tall figure, for I have missed him. What is seen does not count for the Lord. The man looks at his face, but the Lord looks to the heart. Brothers and sisters, Eli did not fear God. His service was not humble. He was not a God-fearing young man. Otherwise, he would have gone on the throne. He did not have a heart of servant. He was not in God's plan. He had his own plan. This morning, do you have your own plan? Are you working your own plan? You know, I know a young man, he, one day he was talking to me and he said that, you know what? Now he's old, he has, well, he had his family and everything. He said, you know what? When I was younger, I felt that the Lord called me to be in ministry. But the fact that I'm going to work for the church and receive a paycheck, I don't want to be treated by the church members as getting or anything. So I have my plan. What I'm going to do, I'm going to work, make myself stable and after that I will be studying ministry to, to, to come to ministry what happened he worked for years and years and he had everything that he thought would be necessary for him to live a good life he told me that it was as if I was bu building my house and the last block was there just at that moment when I'm going to just put it to finish the, the, the house. And all the blocks just fell down. Lost his job, his houses, his cars, his wife, his children. And he just messed up. Sometimes we have good plans in our eyes. Sometimes we think that we will reach it because we have the knowledge to do it. But when you are going outside of God's plan, you cannot have the assurance that you will reach it. Because without God, there is no success. Only in God, we can achieve our goal. Eliab thought that he was and I'm smart. But he has his own plan. You need to find yourself in the plan of God. Brothers and sisters, God's plan requires a pure heart, a sincere service. This is what David had asked God in Psalms 51, verse 10 and 11. He says, create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. This is what we need to look for, young people. Oh, if you want to be in God's plan, you must know him personally. In Psalms 25 verse 4 and 5, we read, Show me thy ways, O God. Teach me thy path. Guide me in thy truth. And teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. For thee do I wait all day. If you want to be in God's plan, you must love him. If you want to be in God's plan, you have to represent him. If you want to be in God's plan, you must spend time with him 
in prayer and his words. The sisters and brothers, dear friends, God's thoughts, God's choices are above our understanding. What we must know is that his children will be called to occupy the very place for which they are called and made fit to fill, to fulfill. There is only one condition. They must be subject to the will of the one whose plans must not be frustrated by human perversity. If you want to be successful in whatever you are doing, at work, school, you need to be in God's plan. Samuel, very puzzled, asked Jesse, your boys, are these all your sons? Is there no one else? You know, friends, when we are in God's plan, they may well forget you. They may well forsake you. They may well neglect you, underestimate you, plot against you. Know that God's plan always realized. Nobody can change what God has for you. Maybe it's been a long time since you are waiting for something from God. Maybe you've been for years waiting for something that you think that would be useful for yourself or your family. Maybe you've been for years suffer from any sickness. Nobody can help. Maybe you are rejected because of X reasons. Let me tell you this morning, my God has no limit. My God has no barriers. My God has no preference. And above, above all, he is now remain. Above all, he always on time. No matter what you are going through right now, remain in his plan. It does not matter how far you are. He come to get you. Samuel asked Jesse, do you have more son? Because it is impossible that God sent me here for nothing. If my God asked me to come here because he has, because he sees someone, my God never lies. So do you have more sons, Jesse? And I guess with a lot of hesitation, Jesse replied, oh, there is still the youngest. But anyway, he's a child. He's not trained. He's not qualified above all. He's very, very busy with the sheep. So there's no way that this little man, this little boy will be the next king. Sometimes we underestimate people, but the Lord see through them, the Lord see in them something that will be profitable for his children. David was in the bush. David had no value for the family and even for his own father. You know, sometimes the one who will put you down will be the one who think that is closer to you. The one in whom you put more trust.
There's a story goes like this. A woman who has a big snake at home. She fed the snake. And at once the snake didn't want to eat anymore. But every night the snake was lay side by side with the woman. And the snake started to lose weight. And she was wondering what happened with the snake. And she took the snake to the doctor and the doctor, she, um, she said, well, maybe the snake will die. I don't know what to do. I try everything, but nothing works. What to do, doctor? And the doctor said, um, have you noticed that the snake every morning try to just stretch, just side by side with you? He said, yes, it does. And sometimes does the snake try to go around you? She said, yes. And the doctor says, well, the snake prepared himself to swallow you. That's why the snake never eats. Just to say that sometimes you think that that person that is close to you will help you. But if you get yourself out of God's plan that person will kill you but if you stays in the in God's plan God will take your back that's why we need to remain in the God's plan church when we are with God we are secure David fathers never thinks that David would be the next king but when David says that he has another son, Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not start the meal before his arrival. In the tradition, before they eat, they had to make the sacrifice. But now Samuel said that we will not start until David comes. Brothers and sisters, when you are in God's plan, no one can block your way. You can experience moments of difficulties, trials. But the Bible says in Psalms 34 verse 19. Psalms. Thirty-four verse nineteen. The Bible says, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but God deliver him out of them all. The fact that we are Christian doesn't mean that we will not have difficulties in our life. The fact that we are in God's plan doesn't mean that our life will be smooth. But sometimes we will have more difficulties than those who do not know God. But these difficulties, as says Ellen G. White, will refine that aspect in our life that would prevent us to, to go with Jesus when he comes. Remain in the plan of God. Isaiah 41 verse 10 and 11 says, Fear that not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee and I will help thee. I will up, uphold thee with the right hand of my righteous. Behold, all they, they that are insist against thee shall be put to shame and confront they that strive with thee shall be as nothing and shall perish when you are in God's plan the Lord got your back you can suffer you can have tribulations we can have problems but we need to remain in that plan. David was 
astonished when he saw someone came. It was a big surprise for him when a messenger came to tell him that the prophet Samuel was in town and that he asked him to come. It was not something that usually happened, but how come the prophet is here? If the prophet is here, there's something happened. And not only the prophet is here, but he asked David to come. You know, usually when you leave the sheep behind, you need to plan ahead. But this time he has to leave them right away to go to the king. He said, it must be something serious. David left the ship even if he was perplexed to know why the prophet and judge could send him out he immediately went to the car now when God speaks to you do you understand that this is God's voice Sometimes there is too many noise around. Our mind is too preoccupied. And the Lord talks to us, but we, we cannot hear that voice because we are preoccupied to realize, to, 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 to accomplish what we think is better for us. But we need to stay in God's plan. David never put his personal will before God's will. When David had arrived, Samuel contemplated him. He was delighted with the charming, modest male features of the young shepherd. Young people, you can be simple but amazing. You don't need to be like the world you don't need to look to speak to walk to dress to eat like the world to be good to be accepted to be where god wants you to be you know often when we are preaching when we are talking about dressing when we're about um when we are talking about modesty we tend to go to the young people only. But, you know, sometimes I'm just wondering, I wonder how can some people you would think that with the maturity, with the knowledge, with the experience would act as they are acting would dress how they, they are dressing. But it's not only young people. I, I need it to be clear. Too many times we put finger on them, but we need to see ourselves. And I, I usually love to say that what we see from the young people is the image that we see in the glass. So that means I need to look myself first and after that I will rebuke them. And when they see that I, 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 I try, I do my best to, to, to stay closer to God, they will do the same because when I say it, I do it first. And when I say it, they will say, well, I saw it before you said it. You know, the crisis that we are facing right now in our church is because... I need to have only one face, but too many times I leave two faces, one for the church and one for outside. David, even if he was in the bush, he was sincere in what he was doing. And anytime he had to, to, to chase a lion, he did it and he put his life in danger to save the sheep. That's why when the Lord was looking for someone to replace Saul, David was qualified to do it because David, what he had in mind was what he 
does in the real life. The voice of the Lord said to Samuel when David arrived, Arise, anoint him, for it is he. It was a big surprise even for Jesse, the father. And Eli was angry because he's supposed to be the one because he, he's the older. But sometimes the Lord goes in the opposite way human being thinks. David had shown himself brave and faithful in his humble duties. When the Lord calls us to do something, do it. Regardless of what people think about us. Regardless of the situation that we're facing. The opposition that we're facing. Do what the Lord calls you to do. People can have all these thoughts about you. Saying bad things about you. But keep going. Never stop. When you are in God's plan. When God chose him to be the captain of his people, Samuel took the own and offered and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. When sometimes things happen and you don't see who is happy and who is sad about it. Because the hypocrisy is there. The brothers was there. And they saw what happened. And, and, and Samuel anointed David. But later we will see what happened. David received that honor. Not because... He was visibly the person to receive it. He had quickly returned to his position. You see, even if he received the high honor, David had not inflected him with pride but when people saw David he was the same person that he used to be before he worked with that same faithfulness that he used to work before sometimes we aim to achieve this to be in that position but when we arrived we just say, well, I am the boss now. I do it. I tell you what to do. But David, after receiving that honor, he quickly go back. Because he knew that the sheep was waiting for him. And he didn't want any sheep to be missing. And he just ran and go to his work. He, he, he had quickly re resumed his occupations. As soon as he, he finished, he went back to the bush with the sheep. As humble and modest as before, he had returned to his hills and had continued to take care of his flocks. So was rejected because of pride. Brothers and sisters, young people, to remain in God's plan is to live accordingly to one's abilities. To remain in God's plan is to aspire to great things without taking a roundabout way. To remain in God's plan is to have self-control. To remain in God's plan is to stay closer to God. You know, if someone tells you that you are good, 
Don't boast on that. Try to be even better because they still have improvement to make. And later you will go to chapter 17 when you will see how Eliab was very mad because of his brother. In chapter 17, when you read in verse 28, when Eliab, David's older brother, heard him speaking with the man, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the, in the desert? I know you conceive it, you are, in, you are in how wicked your heart is. How wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Eliab was afraid because something was happening without his consentment. But if you go back, you will see that before David left the sheep, he made arrangements so that the sheep could be well secured. Brothers, sisters, young people, the Lord has a plan for you. The plan is not what your father or mother is preparing for you, but it's a special plan that the Lord has for you. If you are going through some tough difficulties, some personal issues, if you have some family challenges, don't give up. Stay in his plan. Amen. And when you are in the plan of our God, thing that is too high for you will be possible. Thing that you are trying to achieve years, years ago will be better than what you expected. Like David, let's stay in God's plan and God will prosper us. Things of earth will grow strong.
Thank you, O Lord, for your promises. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done in our life. And now, as we continue until the great day, we ask you, Lord, to be with us and help us to fix our eyes upon you. So that when we are going through temptation, tribulations, we may know that you are there. As we will depart from this place, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In Jesus' name we pray.